Welcome to the December 9th episode of the Locked On These Podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with David Morsuti. Leafs win back-to-back games in shutout fashion as they win a wild one over the LA Kings. We'll recap that game and give you a bit of an update on a couple of injuries that the team has sustained as well. All that more coming up on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother from TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast. Be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from and also catch us on YouTube. Locked On Leafs on YouTube, we give you daily coverage every Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're getting new Maple Leaf centric episodes each day of the week. So uh, subscribe and uh, get your Leaf fix from us here at Locked On Leafs. Uh, Maple Leafs with a, a big victory, five nothing. They kicked the crap out of the LA Kings, David. Um, I don't even know where to start to to begin this game because there's just there was so much that was happening. Oh yeah, top to bottom, like. I didn't expect this to be a game that had a lot of like just a lot of stuff to happen because the Kings like to play a low event game. So first off, thank you for the Toronto Maple Leafs for giving us an entertaining game. But let's be real here. The reason why they did it, Mr. Beebs himself was in the house. They wanted they wanted to put a put out a great performance for their guy, Justin Bieber. And I do appreciate, I will say this. I know people who are not fans of Justin Bieber. I don't particularly care for his music, but that guy has unwavering passion and support of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, 100%. 100%. He's, he's, he's a diehard Leaf fan. He certainly is. But can we talk about what the hell that guy was wearing? <laughs> like, I, I, so, so I was down there. I was, uh, I was at the game. I was covering it up in the press box, and – I didn't know he was in the building. Like he must have been below me. I think uh, is where it was because I, like, I couldn't even see him. But when I saw him pop up on the jumbotron, I'm like, "What the hell is this guy wearing?" It legitimately looked like something that, like, My Little Pony uh, sort of deal. The Care Bears was it from like the Care Bear select collection? Like that. That's what I originally thought when I saw that thing. I'm like, that's the weirdest getup I've seen in my life. It was. It the just were the ones that killed me the most. Oh, can you pull it up so that I we can take so we can show the people who may have who may have missed it? Um, and if you're listening, go check it out uh, on on the YouTube page. You can go and look at it. Maybe we'll repost it also on Twitter at Lockdown Leafs. Actually, I do have a post on my Twitter at uh, at Mickey underscore Canuck. I do have a posted there as a little quote tweet. But look at this thing. Like what? Did, first of all, the jacket looks small. It, oh, it the jacket just, is it, way too. Small. It's 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 too small for him. Secondly, it's puffy, and third, that is a color scheme for like a young eight male child, six seven year old child, yes. little girl. Like <laughs> to be honest, and yeah. then yeah, the the glasses that's something else. Like those are just alien bug eyed glasses, also. But whatever, man, he's having fun. He's, he's, he's at the game. He's having a blast. The team performed for him, performed for all of us. Uh, so whatever. Do your thing, Beebs. But certainly, I mean, I'm not a, I don't know anything about fashion, realistically. So maybe this is what's in. But this is not going to be anything that will ever enter my closet space. I can I can assure you that, Dave. Don't worry about that. Um, but he was treated to a great game, as we all were. 5 nothing. Uh, when the Leafs beat the LA Kings, Ilya Samsonov responding to Matt Murray shutout with a shutout of his own. How and, and and this wasn't an easy one. Like there was a few like solid saves he had to make and like reactionary stops he had to make in this game. There's probably like eight or nine like good opportunities that 
the LA Kings had and Sam Stop had to make a, a good stop on it. So I think this was a well-earned shutout at that. Yeah, I mean, the low event games are always the toughest for goaltenders when they're not test I think at one point, I was like looking at the stats and the shots were 22 to 7 for the Leafs. Like it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Even close. And but but yeah, you saw the saves he made. You know, it was a couple of really tough chances in tight. Those are the ones that, you know, that's what the Kings live and die on. And mm-hmm. credit to him for, you know, staying composed in those moments. Uh, I know you probably have more of the stats from this game in terms of how many high danger chances he might have faced. I got him. You want him? Let's go. So um, it, it wasn't a lot. Like defensively, the Leafs actually did a pretty good job of limiting a lot of uh, a lot of chances, but they did, they did give up fourteen slot shots, um, which is you know a little more than average, more than you'd want to give up. The Maple Leafs, however, had twenty three slot shots, and, and I think it was evident that they had a lot of really good opportunities. But when you look at the scoring chances tonight, um, they allowed twenty three scoring chances. Uh, seven of which were high danger chances. But you look at the expected goals for the Kings, and this is in all situations, by the way, not not just five on five, all situations, um, a 2.01 expected goals for. So, you know, they were expected to generate two goals tonight based on their performance and based on the amount of chances and where those chances were coming from. And uh, they didn't get any. Well, they did get one, but it got called back two to offside. Um, so virtually they got zero, uh, the stat sheet will indicate zero and, um, which means that Ilya Samsonov ended up with an expected goal, say no goal saved above expected of, uh, of over two goals, which is just fantastic when, you know, you think about, um, what Murray was able to do the game before and he came out and he replied and said, Hey, I can do this too, pal. We can trade shutouts back and forth if you really want to. And I, I, I'm i feeling good about this goalie tandem, man. I'm feeling really good about it right now. There aren't many teams, I think, in the NHL that ha- that can say they have a solid one-two punch. Like, if you go across the league, maybe you look at, like, Boston. Their goaltending has been spectacular this season. The Devils, their goaltending has been spectacular. But they're all- they don't have a two. Who's their two? Well, they're goaltending, goaltender. But, yeah, they're one-two. They don't really have a one-two there. But, like, you look across the league, there aren't many teams that have a goaltending tandem like the Leafs, in my opinion. Yeah. No, that, I agree with that. And I think it's such a it's such a strength of this uh, for this team. You know, we, we talked about – if you look at, like, past I, – I think of this almost like the 20 uh, – was it 2016-17 Penguins? when they had Matt Murray and Marc-Andre Fleury, like they had two goaltenders you can put out any night and we're expecting a good performance or expecting to win. It's really funny. You, you mentioned that like this point and you mentioned that specific example, because I was talking to um, Jim Ralph, the color analyst for the, for the Leafs. And he was up in the press box tonight and me and Jimmy like to chat a little bit. That guy's he's, he's always down to chat and I had asked him because he's somebody who played goaltender at the professional level. And I said to him, um, you know, I, I did he do you think that these two can work in tandem? Or do you think that based on the success that they've had this season, it's come where they've had a stretch of games and they've been able to get into a groove by being the starter, the number one. Do you think that could throw things off by them being a tandem? And he said, well, there's not actually a lot of tandems one A's and one B's that actually work the way that they're supposed to. And he said, really think about it. When's the last time you've seen one work out that well? He said, last year, you could argue Shesterkin and uh, Alexander Georgiev was a pretty good one A, one B. But outside of that, you know, I think the one that you mentioned is is the one that he brought up. He said, you can go a few years back to Matt Murray and, and Marc-Andre Fleury. That worked out pretty well for them, led them to two Stanley Cups. But there really hasn't been a lot of success with 1A, 1B tandems. Um, but there seems to be with 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 these guys, right? Like they've now, their they're trading starts. They both have two of the last four starts and they've been able to come away with victories and they've been able to, to pick up shutouts with those wins as well. Um, fun fact, Ilya Samsonov, yet to lose on home ice. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. 
not it, too shabby. Well, it also speaks to when you look at these two goaltenders, what was always a knock on them? They're good goaltenders, talented goaltenders, but they can never be a true caliber starter because they hadn't really had the you know the body of work of a starter. So what did the Leafs do? Let's let's bring them together, right? Like Matt yeah. Murray, he had he had a couple decent seasons in Pittsburgh, but the last few years, injuries and the workload proved to be a little bit too much for him. Ottawa. Ottawa. With Ottawa, and then you look at Samsonov. With with the Capitals, they you know they tried with Vinacek, they tried to bring in Lundqvist, and then they finally just, which I I still don't understand what the Capitals were doing with that, but the Leafs clearly saw that these were two goaltenders that could push each other, and in the right situation, and they don't have to necessarily lean on one, and I don't think there's going to be any tension about that. I'm sure there's going to be the talk at some point in the season about who would get the game one start in the playoffs. Right. Well, down the road. Let's enjoy what's going on right now. Because I'm not even going to bring that up. Yeah. No, there's no reason to bring it up. I mean, you just did for whatever reason. Say you don't want to bring it up, and then you bring it up like that. It's kind of weird thing. I don't know what you're doing. It's kind of messed up if you if you ask me. You're gaslighting me, Dave. You're really just gaslighting me right now. Mike, I better uh, not hear this on Leafs lunch tomorrow. That's all I'm going to say. What's that? I better not hear this on Leafs lunch tomorrow. I, the amount of times that I actually like bring up our conversations on the lunch is very often. I'll, if I ever say, yeah, I was chatting with a friend of mine, it's typically you from this show. So if you ever hear that on Leafs Lunch, 80% of the time, it's a conversation that we have had either on this show or that we have had off air or via text. You're 80% of the time, you're the person I'm referring to when I say, I was talking to a buddy about this recently. It's usually you. Um, but anyway, so goaltending, great performance out of the goaltending. Why don't we take a quick break? And when we get back, let's talk about, you know, some of the offense that we saw. Uh, we saw Pierre Engvall become a snap show. <laughs> we could chat about that as well. There was a fight. Sean Dersey became public enemy number one. Um, there's a, a pretty significant injury that came from this game too. And a little bit more of a, on a, on a down note. Um, so we'll get into all that and more when we return. But first, let me tell you guys about one of today's show sponsors, and that's betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer, esports, and, of course, hockey. They've got it all at betonline.net. Uh, we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online. It's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. We're hosts here at Locked On Leafs. Hopefully you've enjoyed the conversation so far. We're just recapping a 5 nada victory. Leafs blanking the LA Kings tonight at Scotiabank Arena. 13 straight games with at least a point. Mitch Marner extends his point streak to 21 consecutive games, and he did this with a no-doubt clapper from the top of the circle. Oh, I did not know this guy had this in him. Where's he been in his whole career? He Jonathan Quick had no idea that was coming. Like, <laughs> What were the Kings doing? All yeah, that? I, I, I couldn't tell I, you. I will give a shout out to John Tavares on that play because he hit it with a high stick when they were trying to clear the zone. And he had the foresight not to touch the puck. And then the Kings are like, here, we're going to, don't worry, John, we're going to give it back to Mitch. Well, yeah, he hasn't tagged up and then went, like, I don't know what the Kings are doing, man. <laughs> I have no idea. It was that type of night for the Kings, really. If you look at yeah. the most goals that went in, you're just like, that's usually what the Leafs do when they're playing defense when you, well, pre the Leafs going on this incredible stretch. But, I mean, yeah, like Mitch, in there, he almost tied it on that play where he was behind the net and he fell and he sauced it to John Tavares. The, 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 the ass pass? Yeah. I was... Uh, I, if that went in, that would have been incredible. But then Mitch is just like, all right, I guess I'm just going to have to like let out my frustration in one um, like just crushing slap shot. Oh, it was a howitzer. Yeah. Like you don't Hard see that. Uh, you were saying we don't see that from Mitch Marner. I've seen him take a few slap shots, not anything like that. No. And even after the game, um, Austin Matthews was like, I didn't know he had that in him. 
<laughs> just straight up, just kind of clowning the guy, which which I love the somebody when you think you know somebody. This when you think you know someone, they pull out this clapper that's like ninety eight miles an hour. Where the hell was this? Yeah, I don't twenty one games into it. We didn't even get like a stat. Like that's the perfect time to show like how fast that shot went. I would have liked yeah. to know. Yeah, I, I definitely I pulled that out of my ass, but like it, it probably was somewhere around there, like high eighties, nineties. That seemed like a ninety plus mile an hour shot from my vantage point up uh, up in the gondola. But um, you know, Marner just continues to 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 impress, man. Just continues to play at an elite level on on both ends of the ice. I mean, even you know they had to kill off that five on three or the uh, the five minute penalty rather, um, you know, early on in that first period, and they didn't get a whole lot generated like they did score off of off of it but it was called a no goal it was reversed based off of an offside um earlier on in the play but you know they they didn't get a lot of grade a looks off of it and, and mitch marner was out there killing that penalty um had a lot of other good opportunities throughout the game set some guys up i mean that game could have been six seven eight nothing like Yep. The first period, they they could have scored two or three goals in that first period. Jonathan Quick was terrific in that first period. Michael and, Bunting had so many chances. Like, yeah, was- Bunting. Bunting had a really good game. Um, he was in tight. I think I saw – I think he, he may have led or had like four slot shots or something like that. Like he had a lot of, of shots in tight, in high danger areas. And uh, how many slot shots did he end up with? Three. So he had three slot shots on goal. That's so that's – that's good. That's really, really good. Um, so yeah, Marner Street continues. The team street continues. I mean, where, where do we want to hit next? The uh, the the tradition of David Camp scoring goals and the team ending up with the win at the end of the night. That trend continues to grow. Now 16-0-1 when David Camp scores a goal for this team, um, which is just awesome. And the the funny part is like, so I was down at that. It was just. What was it? Three goals in 66 seconds. Yeah. Three goals in 66 seconds. I legitimately was down there and they didn't even have Mar they were like saying Marner's goal among the on the PA system when Camp scored. And then they didn't even say Camp's goal by the time Nip Willie scored. So it was like after Camp had scored, they announced Willie's goal. Like it was just happening that quickly. And and the building went from yeah, it's it's decent to like okay, there was a vibe in that building when those goals went in. Boom, 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 three just like that. Um, Zach Aston Reese had a big hit that kind of you know started some things and and got the crowd up and into it. Then he dropped the mitts and fought. Um, what else happened in this game, man? There was so much. Oh, Sean you Dirty. Doom, Pierre Engvall. Okay. So I had a funny story about Pierre Engvall. Um, so me, I was I was chatting with. So everyone knows I'm a, I'm I I last year was a big Engvall advocate. I have since kind of stepped away from the Engvall praise this season because he just hasn't played well at all. Um, but in the first period, I actually thought that he 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 showed a little bit of bite. So I don't know if you remember, but it was pretty early on in the game. He took a spill. Uh, somebody came and kind of blew him up in the corner. And I can't remember who it was, but they blew him up in the corner. And um, I think it kind of woke him up because then I saw sh- the next shift. He was fighting for a loose puck battle in behind the net and like engaging in it, not just trying to poke it, but actually using his body and trying to like grab the puck and, and get possession of it for his team. I saw him battling in front of the net. Remember that tip shot that he had um, in front of the goal that ended up being pretty quality chance. It was a good stop by Jonathan Quick in the first period, but he's battling in front of the net with the with the defenseman and literally like a, a a net front battle. When the hell do you ever see that out of this guy? I feel like that hit kind of woke him up a little bit. So after the first period, during the intermission, I go up to uh, Frank Corrado, former NHLer, former Maple Leaf, a colleague of mine now at TSN. And he was saying, oh, you know, this guy had a good period. He's like, ah, you know, this guy, he's got to he's got to wake up, you know, something going on. I'm like, you know, quietly had a good period. It's like Pierre Engvall. And I shared, you know, the, the couple of things that he did. I just shared with you why I thought so. 
And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, and he actually, yeah, he, he did okay. He did okay. A couple minutes later, Buddy scores a goal on the power play. I look over to him. He looks at me, and he's like, Buds, I'm never going to question anything from you again. And then in between the second, I'm like, how about Pierre Engvall? My guy's like, yeah, you called it, man. You called it. You're right. And I said, it just felt like he had a little bit more piss and vinegar today. Five minutes later, doesn't this guy go out and get kicked out of the game by trying to hack a guy's neck? <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, a little too much piss and vinegar, apparently. Like, oh, my goodness. So Pierre Engvall, if you missed the game, um, scored a goal but also got ejected in the third period. Um, a little bit of an altercation uh, with, with Sean Dersey. And then, so here's the, the play here, actually. So why don't we play it and uh, we can talk over a little, a little bit. So Sean Dersey and a little bit of a, a karate chop. Yeah. So, okay, what are your thoughts on, on this play, first of all? So it, it looks really bad. I'll say this. Optically, it looks bad. But then, yeah, like I'm, Every, I'm, everything we know about Pierre Engvall, though, do you think he meant to do this? Like he was kicked out of the game for intent to injure. That's so that's what contact was like. I'm, I I would never suspect Pierre Engvall. Like I would think that he's the one that's like the most harmless player in the world. Yeah, because he's soft as butter. Yeah, he's a giraffe. They call him giraffe. Dude, Which is like Pete, the most least intimidating creature in the animal kingdom. His coach, Sheldon Keefe, literally said after the game, I'm going to find the direct quote that he said about this. Sheldon Keefe, his coach, said, you've all watched Pierre play for long enough now to know he doesn't play with an intent to injure. That's from his coach. Which is 100% true. Like yeah. we we've, we've been clamoring for this guy to just be a little bit more physical, and the one time he shows a little bit of physicality, a little bit of piss and vinegar, he crosses the line and gets kicked out of the game. That being said, what I I I honestly don't think he he meant to do what he did. I don't think he meant to karate chop the guy in the neck. I think just his stick came down like he went up, and they kind of. I don't know. It went up, and then maybe he went to go and pull his stick down and give him a little tap on the thigh or the back of the cap or something. But when he brought his stick down, it ended up hitting the guy in the neck, and it looked like he tried to karate chop him in the neck. Essentially, he was out there chopping wood like he was a lumberjack. So optically, it didn't look great. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, just as Sheldon keeps said, knowing his style of play. I don't know if intent to injure is is in his repertoire. So I don't know if that's necessarily what happened there. And I'm pretty sure Engvall, Engvall and uh, Jersey would have played together in the Marlies, didn't they? Like they would have been former teammates back in the day. Would they not have been? Uh, good question. Um, I think maybe I, I like just a small point because I know that he Jersey didn't spend a lot of time with the Marlies. I think like just maybe a cup of like a, just a cup of coffee with them, but. Still, like, they were in development camps together. They were still, like, you know, together in, like, sessions. So it's not like they don't know each other at all. I just think, yeah, there was, in, in my opinion, I didn't see the intent to, you know, really do harm. I just think I was he, right. was, he didn't play. Uh, he was traded, actually, before he got to the, uh, the AHL. So he was already, uh, yeah, he was with Guelph, I guess, when his rights got traded to – to LA. So I was, I was incorrect. They were not, but to your point, they probably were in some sort of development camp together at some point. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I just don't think pure angle had any ill intent, but at the same time, it didn't look great. And the NHL, I am assuming they're going to look at this. Maybe a fine will come his way, but it's the NHL. It's almost like a guessing game. Cause that, that could be high sticking. That could be cross check to the head. I don't know. Yeah, like, I, like, has there been any discourse online about that being a suspendable play? I, have you seen something? I haven't I seen that. My friends ask, like, play the good old, like, how many games? Oh, zero. Come on. He was given, uh, he was given the game. He was, like, yeah, like, a lot of people were just like, it was careless. Um, some are saying, oh, it's a leave, so he'll get something. Some are saying, none. Like, it's, it's kind of, 
all over the place. People are saying he's a leaf, so he'll get zero. I don't. It's it'll be anybody's guess. I would. I'm going to assume he doesn't get anything, but it wouldn't surprise me if uh, our safety does take a look at it. I so, think he'll get a fine at worst. He'll probably get a fine. I, I think he'll get a fine, but I don't think it'll be like supplemental discipline to the point where he's going to miss games without pay. Like, I don't think it'll be, it's a suspendable offense. Um, I'm curious uh, as somebody who watched, like I was there watching it live. You were watching it on the television. Was the Jersey booze after that point coming through the television as loudly as it was in the building? It was coming in a fair amount. I would say like you could, you could tell that there were some people not too thrilled with Sean, uh, Sean Jersey. Who's, Let's be no truth be told, a lot of people would have liked to have seen Sean Dersey remain with the Leafs, and he's done very well at the Kings. But we know the situation the Leafs were in, and you know, Sean Dersey probably holds that a little bit against the, the Leafs. And you, and like every player that gets traded from the Leafs, wants to make his presence felt. Um, I didn't expect him to be the villain in this game, I thought maybe a Drew Doughty, he's always yeah. seems to be the guy to play the villain in these scenarios, but. Yeah, like you know, it, I I don't mind the fans booing in that situation just because it you know Sean Jersey wasn't exactly innocent. I love it. I I actually like I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I think outside of I'm trying to, like I've been to most of the games this year. There's one like there's a couple of times where there's been you know some some large engagements but that m- might honestly have been like the most consistent loudest engagement that i've seen from the crowd in a very long time like every time every time for the rest of the game that guy touched the puck in the third period there were loud boos loud and there was a lot of them and then the one time he played the puck back into his own zone and kind of misplayed it, and the guy got jeered. Everyone was heard cheering as if the Leafs had scored a goal just because the guy made a mistake. They were just giving it to him, man, absolutely giving it to him. And I, I honestly thought that Michael Bunting was oh. gonna, was going to fight him. Like I, 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 they were chirping on the bench. They're right chirping. Now. He was coming off the ice at one point, like. Yeah, like I thought I thought that was going to happen, man, because my thought process on that was imagine the eruption that Michael Bunting would get from the home crowd if he drops the mitts against Sean Dersey. Oh, and, like the, the place would have exploded. Oh, would have erupted. And, and like that's the type of guy who 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 craves that type of yeah. you know, emotion out of the fan base being a, a local guy. I thought it was going to happen. It didn't, probably for the best, but I thought that it may may happen at some point, uh, but it did not. But I, I thought that it was it was great, though, to be honest with you. Like, honestly, I think it's the loudest that I've seen this crowd all season long, and it was to boo a guy. Not a goal. No, I mean, the, Mitch Marner, when he scored his goal and it got announced, it was, it was, it was loud. There was a lot of cheers there, obviously. Um, cause at this point, it, every time he gets a point, it's breaking a franchise record. Um, but it, this was the first time, like, when's the last time you think we've heard this, like this happens in Montreal, this happened in, in New York when, when Tavares went back to the Island, this doesn't really happen in Toronto. The, to, like Leaf fans don't really get that animated to be completely honest with you not for the one game against the kings no right and and it's not something that we expected to happen but i love that the the fans were passionate they were winning they were up they were in a good mood and they were kind of just jeering the guy i thought it was great i really did shout out to whoever started that down in the building big shout out big um Okay, we'll take one more quick break. When we get back, let's do our three stars. We haven't done our three stars. That's what I mean. It was such a crazy game. We had to, like, we're just talking about things. We haven't even given our three stars yet. And also, uh, Nick Robertson left the game with an injury. We'll give you an update on his status on the other side as well. Uh, I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Moore. Sooner you're listening to Locked On These Podcasts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. 
Welcome back into the Lockdown Lease Podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. Got Dave Morissuti with me, my co-host here. Uh, Maple Leafs with a 5 nothing shellacking over the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, it's now back-to-back shutouts for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, before we get into the three stars, why don't we give that quick update on, on Nick Robertson. Um, he took a really tough hit in the corner. I don't know if you have that... Uh, if you have that video that we might be able to pull it up or something. It was an unfortunate play. It was a very unfortunate play. It was, but you know, both guys going for a puck and he kind of got blown up. Um, who was it? Blake Lazat who, who blew him up there or um, no, who, who blew him up there? I have it in my notes, Matt Roy, Matt Roy, both of them went into the corner for a puck battle ended up getting an interference call on it, but, uh, Robertson landing awkwardly on his shoulder, and it sounds like uh, corner Sheldon Keefe is going to be out for a while with a shoulder injury. And and watching him being taken off the ice, skating off, and just like heeled over, not moving that shoulder, you knew that it wasn't good. Um, I've only had one sports injury in my life, and it was it was a shoulder injury in rugby. Uh, where I separated my shoulder and and I kind of had the same thing. It was dangling and I was just kind of like, I can't move this. It's just, it's just chilling. And that's kind of like when I saw it, I was like, Ooh, that's for sure a shoulder problem. That's not good. Um, and I feel so bad because Nick Robertson's a guy who has had so many injury issues over the course of, of his career. Um, he hasn't played a whole lot and that's kind of been part of the problem with his development not only the fact that he le- legitimately has been up in the press box for a lot of these games this season, but in seasons prior, just hasn't played a lot of games due to injury, due to um, the practice squad, due to COVID. It- it's really hindered him in a way, hindered his development, and now this injury is going to take him out a long time as well. Um, it's it's super unfortunate for, for Nick Robertson. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you don't like an injury to kind of stunt his development, and it's Fortunate thing, I know some people are going to make the comments about his size, and that's part of the reason why he was in that position. But it's an unfortunate play. There's not really much, you know, Robertson could do, considering his priority was to fight for the puck and not worrying about, you know, Roy, you know, doing that. And it was it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate, but um, yeah, it doesn't sound like a good. Shoulder injuries can be, as you said, they can be very finicky. They can be short term or they can be really long term, depending on the severity of it. So, so who do you think uh, gets that next little twirl in the top six for the next game? Man, that's a good question. Like, is it Dennis Malgan? I don't like he has a really like they gave him a shot tonight. He, he I mean, they were kind of flipping a few guys in there. I mean, they kind of put lines in a blender at times and, and had a couple of things going. But Dennis Malgan had a couple shifts out there. Looked pretty good, actually. Not I think, good. He looked OK with those guys. Likelihood and probably is going to be Kerfoot. Just I don't know. I, I kind of like. I like that line of Kerfoot, Camp, and Engvall. Like, I think that's a, a solid third line. I, I, I wouldn't touch it. I would probably prefer to go with a guy like uh, a guy like like Dennis Mulligan. No, that's true. You sometimes you want to keep. I, I, and we've been talking about getting scoring from the bottom six. They came out big tonight, so I, it wouldn't surprise me if if they just if Keith wants to keep that uh, together. So yeah, Mulligan would be. The first choice is because he's the one that's easily moved. And we know that Wayne Simmons was already planning to draw in against the Flames on Saturday. And you're not playing Wayne Simmons in the top six. He is going to be on that fourth line. So that's kind of how I see it, how I see it coming about. Unless they decide to call somebody up. I was just, I just want to mention that. I'm literally, as you say that, typing in Toronto Marlies. I'm going to see, like, is anybody really, like, proving to them to, to the team that they deserve a call up. We did see SDA get a chance to go up and play, but then he got sent down. Um, Joey Anderson, he's got 11 goals in 21 games. Uh, potentially he gets an opportunity. You know, who actually is kind of an interesting one. Adam Goddett. 
because Adam Gaudet was given that opportunity yeah. early on in preseason and then got hurt in the first game. But he was given a run kind of at that top six winger role. He's one of those players who they were going to give a chance to and get a look seat through training camp. And then he got hurt, ended up getting sent down to the minors. Um, and he's been there ever since. But 12 goals in 18 games, 16 points for the guy, 25 years old. Maybe Adam Goddard's a, a player who could get himself uh, a call up back up into the, into the National Hockey League. Maybe that's a, a possibility. Or maybe, I don't know, Holmberg gets a chance to, to move up. We'll see what ends up happening there. Um, why don't we go through our three stars of, uh, of tonight's game as we do after every single Maple Leafs victory. So we'll start with your third star, Dave. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, William Nylander because that was absolutely, I wouldn't call it disrespectful, but that was, like that's like watching, I'm a big, Andrea Pirlo guy. That's like watching Andrea Pirlo just <laughs> softly touch that penalty kick right down the middle. If you haven't watched it, it's probably one of the greatest penalty kicks I've seen just because it was so casual and nonchalant and he had no reaction. And that was like what I saw from William Nylander. I thought he was going to shoot it. And then he just like, nah, I'm just going to casually go backhand. Yeah. Just open you up, open you up. Think I'm going to go up high. And the second you open up your legs to, to get over there, I'm going to slide it right through so casually. You're right. It was the softest little touch, soft as a baby, soft as Pierre Engvall. Tonight excluded. Tonight <laughs> excluded. <Yeah. laughs> um, he had a good game for sure, um, William Nylander. He's, he's put together a great little stretch. Like Realistically, he, he honestly has. Um, I want to give some love to, uh, to Zach Ass and Reese, actually. Um, so I, I'm going to give Zach Ass and Reese my third star. Like he's not someone who played an awful lot, only 13 minutes of ice time, but I, I mean, the guy ended up with two shots on goal, four hits, a big, massive blow up of a hit also, and then ends up dropping the mitts and scoring the W in the fight call, you know? So I, I the thing with Zach Ass and Reese too, is I think that kind of, that really woke up that team in a way like getting that big massive hit um really got everybody going um so it was good to see that kind of happen there uh so i'm gonna give him some love with a third star your second star dave uh, i'm gonna go with uh Ilya samsonov i mean you can't how do you not give love to the guy who got a shutout seven two and oh point nine two four save percentage 2.09 goals against in nine games this season. Okay, I need to know who your number one star is because I don't know how Samsonov's not your I number one. Give it to Marner for continuing the streak. Oh, I mean, it's not a terrible pick, but Samsonov. Look, did you see who got the belt tonight, actually? I did not. It was not Samsonov. Was it Zach Axon Reese? It was Zach Aston Reese who got the belt, and Samsonov was like, "Yeah, I get a shutout, and he gets the belt. Go figure." <laughs> it's the classic Ilya Samsonov type of uh, type of answer. That guy's becoming a, a this is a fun, fun, funny player. So, uh, but for as he got the shutout but no belt, it's not for me to get. I waiting, waiting. I will play better for belt. I love it. I actually adore adore that. I'm I'm gonna dive into the uh, into the post game audio. I can't wait to see because he like he's just so funny. <laughs> the faces he makes sometimes it's really good. Uh, he was my number one star though. Like I I definitely had Ilya Samsonov as as my number one star. I thought that he was he was great tonight. Um, I, I felt that uh, he had to make some some real key saves and, and a lot of you know, tough saves, and he was there to, to get it done. And anytime he can finish a game with a shutout, I think you're going to be happy with the performance, and, and I certainly was. And the guy now undefeated on home ice at Scotiabank Arena, perfect 6-0, and gets his first career shutout as a Maple Leaf in response to watching from the bench Matt Murray get the shutout the game before. So it, they're, they're, it's just outstanding stuff that we're seeing out of these guys. My second star, though, Dave, was uh, David Kampf. I want to give David Kampf some love scored a goal tonight um and he's just been an, an ox defensively 
Always, always is, man. Like, he's just so reliable. Question for you. What's Camp's contract worth at the end of this year? You just know somebody likes to overpay for guys. Like, for these... He's a role player. He's a very important role player. Like that's not to diminish his value or anything. So, what are you thinking, number wise? Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just just to get an idea of his card. So he's at 1.5 right now. Which uh, is a darling deal, sweetheart deal for what he brings to the team. Yeah. Like, is it crazy to say just over 2.25 million? Like, I I mean. I, I can't go too too high, and it's you know you have to consider his his role in the team. He's not a top six guy, like, but you know, bottom six guys do get paid well. You look at Pierre Engvall; he's making two point two five. So that's kind of where I can make the baseline a little bit there. Yeah. Well, what's Yarncroc making? Two point one. He is making two point one. Yeah. So who do you, who in your mind? Is worth more money, Yarn Croc or Fantas? I would agree. So I think like I may even give the guy because he's only what twenty six or twenty seven. Like he's not even that old. Like I could stomach giving this guy a four year deal. He's a he's twenty seven. Yeah, I could stomach a, a three or four year deal north of two million. You know, get this guy locked up two point two five two point. Maybe even two and a half. It takes two and a half to get them locked up. Like that's your that's your third line center, fourth line center, top penalty killer. Just to get that guy locked up, I think, would be would be smart because he, you know, he 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 knows what he's doing out there. He really knows what he's doing out there. And he's a common presence um when he's out there on the ice. And uh, the way that the Maple Leafs want to play, the identity that they've kind of established as of late, this very defensive minded identity works perfectly with the way that David camp likes to play. I, I think that it's, it's a really good match. It's a really good fit. He's worked well in uh, Sheldon Keefe's system that he's tried to, uh, to get going here. It's funny. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm going to throw one more at you. Okay. I'm going to throw one more at you and then we'll, we'll probably call her, call her an episode, but David camp or Michael Bunting, who would be your priority this summer as a UFA? Both are UFAs, by the way. Oh, man. Uh, I, man, that's tough. Oof. I'd probably lean a little bit more towards David Camp just because, I don't know, Michael Bunting could look to really take a massive contract, right? What's a, You have to look at what's going to cost to keep Bunting versus what it's going to cost to keep camp. And, like, do the Leafs have somebody in the system that can replace a David Camp? I would actually argue they might. Who's a Pontus Olmberg? Yeah. Okay. It's not crazy to think that. Like, if, if Michael Bunting is looking for a contract north of, like, three and a half, four million, I'm I'm a little cautious on that just because – did you, you see to... what Ilya McKay have signed for this summer? That's what I'm saying. He can get it. And it could That's be that actually. mckay has got like 15 points in 20. He's been very good for Vancouver, actually. Yeah. Like he's actually hasn't been bad. Um, I just think about teams that desperately want a Michael Bunting and they're gonna pay for it. So <sighs> I and I, you also wonder like what does a Matthew Nice project on this team going forward? Robertson yeah. as well. Like you have to kind of think about that. You have to think about yeah. Matthew's next contract, Nylander's next contract. Like this is not exactly the Leafs aren't exactly in a position to give the, uh, Michael Bunting whatever he wants, and even in a way, David Camp too. David Camp believes he's in for a larger role on another team. Yeah, like I mean, he could say I'm every good as uh, dominant defensively as Philip Deneau. And Philip Deneau's making what five and a half on LA, not providing a whole lot of offense. Like, I mean, he provides more offense than David Camp. But if you're Camp, you're like, I do a lot of the similar things defensively. I can shut down guys just as much. Am I going to score as many goals as Phil Deneau? Maybe not. 
But if he's worth five seven five, I got to be worth three, three and a half. That's what I'd be saying if I was Camp's agent. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they can both take some hometown discounts, if you know what I'm saying. All right, so those are our uh, three stars. What a long-winded way to get into our three stars there. Uh, the Flames in town uh, for Saturday night. Hockey Night in Canada, an all-Canadian battle. Should be a fun one. Toronto looking for 14 straight games with a point without a loss in regulation. Outstanding. TJ Brody returned today. We've been talking about TJ Brody. And how he looked. That's how wild it was, where that wasn't even a, a that was just an afterthought on this podcast. Uh, thought he played well. <laughs> we'll. We'll leave it at that. Thought he played well. Um, and we'll get a chance to get another glimpse of him in the game against Calgary on Saturday. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Uh, enjoy the weekend, folks. Enjoy the game uh, tomorrow. But until then, we will chat with you guys again on Monday. Until Oh, actually, I won't be chatting with you guys. Dave, it's all you next week. Oh, my God. Leaving me again. Another cruise. Yeah. I'm not even upset about it, to be honest with you. You're in good hands, though, folks. Dave's a stud. Uh, I think he said he's going to be looking to get some uh, get some some friends of the show to join to to uh, to to chat a little bit. Maybe if if I can make the internet work, I can make an appearance. But you know how spotty the the Wi Fi is on those cruises; it's not not very good. Yeah. But maybe we'll see. But uh, you're in good hands, people, with Dave. Um, I'll be listening though. I will be listening to each and every show, obviously, to make sure that it's going swimmingly. And you're using all the proper words that I like to use. Mer Daddy Fresh, clearly. Had to say that for a uh, friend of the show. The person, well, not friend of the show, but friend of ours. On Discord. A user on Discord who said he, it's it's cringe. Mer Daddy Fresh is cringe and to stop using it. I love how they blamed you, though, by the way. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, Dave. I'm going to just shut my yap because I'm yammering now. Enjoy the next week. I will be back the following week. Dave, you'll chat with the good folks on Monday. Until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leaves.